Politicians make promises they sometimes keep. We sign contracts and then look for ways to break them. Jesus also made a couple of very significant promises. But how can we be sure that he will keep them? Today on Sabbath School University, we will take a closer look at Jesus Christ, the law, and the covenants. And we will explore this topic with our guests. Uh, can you introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Danielle, and I am a junior theology major at Washington Adventist University. Excellent. Yes, I'm Tyler. I'm also a uh, religion major at Washington Adventist University in my senior year. I'm a pastor in the area, Pastor Glenn Burney in Brooklyn Churches, and I'm Diego. Okay, excellent. And Danielle, could you lead us in prayer? And before we, we pray, can you read a memory verse for this lesson? Yes. Our memory verse for this lesson was Hebrews 9, 15. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here today. Lord, I pray that your spirit guides us as we study and delve into your word. Thank you so much for your covenant, for your promise. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay, and let us turn back for a few seconds to the memory verse that we just read. Mm -hmm. And before we do that, let me ask you a question. Uh, have you ever uh, promised anything and then didn't keep your promise? Yes. yes. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that you will be the only people who keep their promises. <laughs> yeah. Tell me, can you, can you share any story that you can, you can publicly share? Yeah, um, it's very simple. I had a friend who was sick, and I said, I'll make you soup. I'll make you soup. It never happened. He got better. He's like, what happened to my soup? And mm -hmm. it just never happened. But now you have a special <laughs> cup. Where I can you make a, soup. You can make a soup in this cup and then bring the soup to her. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Do, can any other examples? Uh, it's so many, honestly, that I can't, I can't even count. <laughs> Let know. me give you an account of all my years. <laughs> yeah. Well, the good thing is this, uh, um, I'm, I'm happily married to my wife. And at the beginning, I say, oh, yeah, sweetheart, I'm busy, but tonight I'm going to do something, and something will come up. Like, I had to visit somebody, somebody in the hospital, whatever, and uh, that would not happen. She said, okay, just don't promise it. Right? Mm -hmm. If you promise, you make sure you fulfill it. So I'm trying to work on that. But that mm -hmm. happens too. Mm -hmm. But the worst thing when somebody promised you some, promised me something and they did not keep that. Mm -hmm. So I felt very And bad. then you're so frustrated yes. with this person. <laughs> yes. Okay. And today we are talking about Christ, the law, and the covenants. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we know what the, the meaning of the word Christ is, obviously. Yeah. Anointed. Messiah, anointed, 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 one. anointed one. So it's, it means Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, the law, and also the covenants. But what is, what, is that mean, what is the meaning of the word covenant? It's what is that covenant? A contract, uh, an agreement between two parties. Okay, so yes. can we rename it as say Christ, the law, and the contract? Or uh, agreement? Yes, or even the promise. Oh, the promise. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. interesting. So is there a distinction between the promise and the covenant? Absolutely. Yeah, I think, I think there, there, there's a um, distinction. I mean, the word contract for us today sounds so um, official, ambiguous. official yes. business. You right. know, we have a contract here, and yeah. if you you have the contract, you know, you have to pay a fine. So, but um, the difference between promise and contract, like if I promise you something, I'm not saying, well, I would do that if you do that or whatever. No, I'm going to do something and I'm trying to promise you something, right? right? So it's a now, promise. It's a promise. If you promise, you just, you just promised without mm -hmm. anything. Yeah, bad. without anything. Now, a, a covenant is when I, both of you are coming together and now, okay, you're going to do your part. I'm going to do my part. It's still, you promise to each other. But because it's a mutual pr promise, that is a covenant. Okay, so in other words, a promise would be more like the engagement, whereas the covenant would be more like the marriage. Uh, I don't know. I don't I know. I yeah. don't but I think engagement is pretty much like a covenant already. It is yeah. too, But yeah. it can be broken. Yeah, it can be broken, but the covenant also can be broken, <laughs> can it? Yeah. yeah. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Promise is like, I promise you I will give you $100 if you succeed on the Sabbath School University, for instance. I will, I know, I will not. And it's not my <laughs> promise. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm just saying, that, or thank you for watching us. If you email to us, we will, uh, we will, we will send you this cup. I cannot promise that. Right. I'm not the... I, I'm not the uh, yeah, I cannot promise that. But what... Uh, so. It's, that can be a promise. So you don't, we don't even wait for anything back. But if I, if I say, what is, uh, but the covenant is like, you're married to me, I'm married to you. From now on, we all will be faithful to each other. Mm -hmm. Two of us will be faithful to each other. Definitely. Mm -hmm. 
So that is the covenant. Yes. Is yes. It? That, 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 at least that's what I understand. It's, 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 it's together. It's involving more than one party. Mm -hmm. It's together. Both doing their part. So there is a promise. There's promise of uh, happiness, good health, etc. Yeah. But there, there is also a covenant. Yes. That means that you and I, we will keep it. Yes. And yeah. if you break the covenant, I also can break the covenant. Mm -hmm. Right. This is scary now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Christ, the law, and yeah. the covenant. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, let's move on. Okay, so let's, let's go back to the, our memory text. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And uh, Daniel, could you read for us again, this verse again? For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. Mm. Okay. Mm. So, uh, do, 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 what, what do you understand from this text, Daniel? There are two covenants. There's the new covenant, mm -hmm. and then there's the first covenant that was broken, obviously. Uh, oh, wow. Yes. So there was, there was one covenant that was broken, it seems like, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there is the second covenant, and that second covenant is brought mm. to us by whom? By Christ. Christ. By Christ. The mediator. Yes. The mediator. <coughs> so Christ's law and the covenant. So we, we see, so let's, let's take a look at this first covenant. What was that mm -hmm. first covenant? But it also says something uh, uh, also uh, in the second, yeah. That was the covenant given on Sinai, right? With, through Moses. Okay, uh, who, yeah, let's... Well, there is a covenant before that too, right? Okay, there, okay, oh, of, I'm, I'm, losing, I'm losing everything, guys, come on, stop. <laughs> let's just, let's start from the very beginning. beginning it's a very right? good place to start, according yeah. to yeah. the sound of music, yeah? yeah. <laughs> so, so, okay, so let's go from the very beginning. Okay, let's go in the, like, any covenant in the Old Testament. Let's start from the very beginning, Old Testament. What covenants do we see there in the Old Testament? Noah. Noah. Mm -hmm. yes. What was that covenant? I won't f destroy the earth by flood. Okay, so one covenant, I yeah. will none. But I'll go before that. I, I look in the Garden of Eden, I see a covenant. Mm -hmm. God put the tree there and said, you know, you should never eat from the tree. From the day that you eat, you shall surely what? Die. That, it was a covenant. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve, they did what? They so they broke, broke the, the covenant. covenant. They broke the yes. covenant, there was a consequence. Yeah. So from the, God is a covenantal God. He's always doing covenant. He's always doing, I'm going to do my part, but I need you to do your part too, because I love you. Mm -hmm. I need your love. Love back. me back, yes. please. Yeah. 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 And uh, he's not a tyrant, like, I, I do this for you, do this for me. He says, no, I love you, mm -hmm. love me back. It's because of love. Mm -hmm. It's because oh. of okay, love. Okay, so uh, the Garden of Eden, one covenant. What else? Noah. Noah. Noah, he said that he will not... Destroy the earth by flood. You don't mm -hmm. have to worry about this anymore. Here's a sign. Okay, here's the sign. So the rainbow, whenever I see a rainbow, oh, Noah, hi. <laughs> so this is good. I remember the ark immediately. What else? Abraham. Abraham, what do we know about that covenant? He would give him a seed and an inheritance. Hmm. The promised land as well, mm -hmm. the covenant there. You'll be the father of a, of a, of a, of a big nation. Yeah, many and that nations. nation right. will bless every other nation. Yes. So then what, what else? Do we see any other covenants? I think we, again, in the whole Bible we see covenants, not only God with uh, Adam and Eve, Noah, Abraham, and, and, and Jacob, and Isaac, and, and the whole generation, mm -hmm. but between people too in the whole Old Testament. Mm -hmm. A marriage was a covenant. Mm -hmm. Look the covenant between David and Jonathan. They promised each other mm -hmm. their yes. friendship. Yes. So the covenant there, one, covenant is about lo um, faithfulness, Loyalty, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it pushes you to be loyal, as, as loyal as your other friend is. So you know, mm -hmm. Tyler's never going to break the covenant, I'm never going to break my part. The good part of God, that we know God will never break His part. Yeah, and I would even go as far as to say that it's also about purity. You're keeping yourself pure Very to the good. to the covenant that you've made, the mm -hmm. promise that you've made. You're, you're, you're tying yourself to it and saying, yes, I will keep it because I love you. No, but th this is so great because when we see, uh, like, uh, at least I feel, I feel it is, it's impact, it impacts my life now. Mm -hmm. How I see that there is, there is a number of covenants, and the covenants is a, is a union or agreement yes. between two parties, maybe sometimes, maybe more, I don't know, but uh, be, uh, usually it's between two parties. That one party says that I will do this for you, and the second party says I will do this for you as, mm -hmm. as, my, as my appreciation for what you are doing this, mm -hmm. like for what you are doing to me. But then there's also a promise. A promise is just something that I promise you, you will receive it. Mm -hmm. I promise you, you will receive it. Don't worry about it, no matter what, what happens. So we see these uh, things, uh, two things happening in the Old Testament. Yes. Now let's move forward and let's turn to Galatians. Galatians, and then we will see Paul talking about the same things. Mm -hmm. In Galatians chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. And uh, Diego, could you read for us? Uh, Galatians sure. chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. And this I say, that the law, which was 430 years later, 
cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ, that it should make the promise of no effect. Mm -hmm. For if the inheritance is of the law, and it is no longer of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Mm. Mm. Wow. Okay, what, what, wow, what, what do you mean, wow? Wow, well, you've got, you got to try to read it and really unpack the text. Paul has always... <laughs> let's brings try. A lot let's of, try right. to unpack the text. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's try to unpack the text. So what do we see here? We see, what do we see here? There's the law. Okay. And then there's the covenant. Okay, so there is the law and there is the covenant. Yes. Yeah, but it says us the law, which was 400 years, 430 years later. So first you have a covenant. So you have a covenant first? Exactly. Yes. And then you have the, the law the later law. too. Mm -hmm. This is incredible. So look what happens. Like, so, uh, the, because think about it for one second. There is a covenant first, but then there is a contract. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work this way. Usually what it does, it's just like, first you need to sign the contract and then the, the covenant will become, uh, effective, will, right? will become yeah. effective. But in this case, what Paul is saying, that the covenant happened when? 430 years, years later. Wow. So, so the covenant happens and then the law 430 years later. Mm -hmm. So what does it tell us? Like, tell me, we try to, let's, let's try to unpack it even a little bit more. Hmm. It's, it, it's just to... I think we see that God's willingness and, uh, and, and patience with his people too. He's mm -hmm. preparing them for a covenant. So he gives his covenant first, uh, his love. He chooses them first. And now later, slowly but surely, gradually start revealing his will and, and their part of, of this covenant. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't like the word contract because it sounds so superficial, yes. mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's this relational um, covenant. Uh, and starts giving them later. So I think he reveals God's patience with us in a sense. Slowly but surely he reveals himself and his will. And you know, it's very interesting too, because it says, and this I say that the law, which was 430 years later, cannot annual the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ. Mm -hmm. That word annual means to cancel. Mm -hmm. So saying it doesn't cancel the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ. So it must do something else. This is incredible. Mm -hmm. Yes. Please. It's interesting to think that the covenant comes first and then the law because it's, it kind of shows God's process of working with humans. Like mm. he wants them to fall in love with them, to, to get married to him yes. first. <sighs> and then he's like, now that we're married, now that we've fallen in love, this is what you can do to show how much you love me. Tweet, tweet, tweet. This is how you yeah. love me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, no, this is, if, if you want to know the highlight of this study today, this is what we, we just, this yes. what we was just said. If you watch us online, go back and rewatch us again. <laughs> re us again. <laughs> this is great. So what you're saying is, you're saying that God wants us to enjoy this marriage with him mm -hmm. and then only like fall in love with me yes yeah. fall in love with me fully and yeah. then and then it springs from the heart naturally yeah yeah you know it's not like this list of do's and don'ts what would a, a marriage relationship look like if the husband was like okay i want you to wake up at this time and make my breakfast and wash and iron my clothes and make sure and uh, this woman may do that but is it coming out of a loving Mm -hmm. source, mm -hmm. but what if she's just doing that? Then it becomes only a contract. Yes, yeah. exactly. Not a covenant, not exactly. an agreement. Yeah. Relationship. But if he shows love to her, it's going to awaken that love in her to do these things mm -hmm. naturally. And, and what Danielle just, uh, what you just said is excellent because covenant and then law. Yes. Yeah. How practical that is in our lives. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's very powerful again because it shows God's love. He first is willing to make a covenant with us. He's willing, he's willing to love us when nobody wants. He looks at us the way we are and he comes in first and say, let me embrace you the yes. way I want. And then I'm going to show you a much better way. And this is, we look at the law, again, nobody likes contracts. Again, contract, it seems to be horrible. But when you think of this is the path for happiness, for righteousness sake. Mm. He reveals himself, but he's willing to go first and meet us where we are. And even more than this, he's making himself vulnerable to become heartbroken. Mm -hmm. Definitely. For if we violate that covenant, what does it do to God? Mm. He breaks his heart. Yes. Mm. So uh, it's, uh, it's just uh, what, what, we, what we discover is that uh, the, the word covenant is not necessarily, even the word covenant itself is, doesn't sound very, very pretty anymore. Mm. It's just, with, when you think about it, what I like is just falling in love yeah. mm. with each other. Yes. 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 What, what Daniel was just saying, we are falling in love with each other, mm. uh, with each other and as a result, the law is being given. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, so God is saying, if you want to even fall in love with me more, 
let's continue this relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, that was a great illustration that Danielle mentioned because if you look at a marriage again, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to come to, to your uh, future wife or your, or your boyfriend, okay, here are the rules, you got to follow this, 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 this. No. First, you're going to uh, fall in love. And as you get engaged, as you prepare yourself to get married, you're going to realize in your relationship, well, we have to have some boundaries. Yeah. We have to have some rules to respect one another. But first, this falling love needs to take place. Excellent. So let's go back for a few seconds just to, to the story of Abraham, for just for a few seconds. So what, how that covenant was given to Abraham? Where did Abraham live? Or, or before, or, or what? Mesopotamia. Or. Yeah. Mesopotamia. Yeah. Or. Mm -hmm. So it was what present day what? That'd be Iraq. like Iraq. Or Iraq. Iraq. Okay, present day Iraq. So the, he lived in Mesopotamia between two rivers. Mm -hmm. So he he lived there, and then God calls him. <laughs> yes? Out. Yes. Yeah. Out. And what did he do? He went. He went. He went by faith. By faith. Yes. Mm. So you see, there is like God still wants us to have some sort of faith and yeah. trust. Yeah. Trust. Trust. Yeah. Trust or faith. Hmm. So uh, look, look how covenant, covenant and faith, how uh, they come together. Yeah, and yeah. it requires trust. Yeah. Yes. yes. And, and, and here's the thing for me. This was profound. I've experienced some hard times in my life. And this is what I learned. Um, our faith must be in the promise and in the covenant of God, not in the miracle. When God mm. told Abraham, come mm -hmm. out of your, your land, I'm mm -hmm. going to show you yet. He didn't know where he was going. Mm. He, all, the only thing that he had it was what? God's promise and God's covenant. Mm. And sometimes we want to see all the miracles. We want to put our faith on the miracle. Lord, I want everything concrete near. No, but Lord, you saying what? First, trust me. Mm. Take your step out of faith. Faith in his word first. Okay, so mm. what we see, we see faith that results into this covenant. Mm -hmm. And then as the result of covenant, we see this law is given. As, 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 as a result, because they want to worship and we want to worship. And then the law is given and then let's move forward. Mm -hmm. Then we see uh, in Galatians, we are still in Galatians chapter 3. And I would encourage you to read Galatians chapter 3, the entire chapter yes, and the entire book, definitely. of course. Mm -hmm. Of course, when you have a free time. And we will do this as well. Yes, when yes. we come mm -hmm. home, we will read the entire book. Galatians. Read it again. But we will read Galatians chapter 3, verses 24 and 25. And, uh, uh, yeah, if you could, Tyler, if you could read for us. Okay, verse 24 says, Therefore the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. Mm. Okay, hmm. so do you see this progression? Mm. Yes. Covenant, faith, law, and then... Who, law leads us to whom? Christ. To Christ. To Christ. And, you know, I love this example of a tutor. I'm taking statistics right now, and I am okay. horrible at math, okay? <laughs> so the very first thing I did was go to a tutor. And this woman just started breaking it down for me and helping me understand it. Now I'm getting to the point where I'm better able to know statistics and understand the meaning of it, which now makes it an experience rather than just some arbitrary tasks that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So this tutor brings us to Christ so that we can truly experience the law. Okay. This is, this is a very important point. It, it's, it sounds very important to me. <laughs> what it is, it is, if, for instance, the law does not lead us to Christ, then there is no need in this yes. law. Yeah. Just do, right. forget about this forget law. About it. Don't, don't, even, don't even do, don't even, don't even try to be uh, mm. to keep it. Or, to keep mm -hmm. it. What's the point if it doesn't lead to Christ? Right. But if it leads to Christ, then it's a good law. Mm. Yes. The, uh, this is life changing. And because, again, uh, once somebody said that maybe the worst type of evil is to do the good thing for the wrong intentions. Mm. And if you think, why do you even keep the law? Is because you want to, or any kind of law, because we have good law abiding citizens or the law of God, a decalogue. Do I keep because I want to have a good reputation as a Christian? Mm. Because I'm afraid of losing this or losing that? Mm. Again, if we, do, if we do not do that and it does not bring us back to Christ or closer to Christ, Mm -hmm. What is the point? Mm. And this is, this is also a very important point as well, because if you think about it, uh, the law, we are talking about when we, when we refer in this program, when we were referring to the law, we, were, we would always refer to the Decalogue, which is mm. the Ten Commandments yes. mm -hmm. that was given by God himself on the Mount Sinai or in that, mm. that peninsula. So what we see also here, uh, interesting, because there is um, the law uh, for, for the Jewish people mm -hmm. of that time and also today, the law is the revelation of God. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. The only revelation of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. So, so the law is the revelation of God. Why do you think it's the law revelation of God? Well, it shows his character. And, and this is amazing because in John 17, verse 3, 
It says, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, mm. the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Mm. So you see, this is, the look at this progression. So there was a law, and may, many people, even today, unfortunately, sometimes when we, some people accept the Old Testament only, or yeah. the Hebrew Bible only, and mm. do not accept Jesus. So then the revelation of God is, still remains in the law. Mm -hmm. yeah. But verse uh, John chapter seventeen verse, verse three, three says, "But there, there is also Jesus, yes, mm -hmm. who comes and who who reveals to God even greater than the law." Yes. Yeah, exactly, and it also shows us that when we just lean more toward the New Testament and we forget about the law of God, we're also forgetting about some of His identity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And we're losing those gems that God has given us to to really embrace and to to change our lives. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, just think of this: the law before it was written in tablets. Jesus is, is a walking, living, mm. breathing law, mm. full manifestation, representation, representation of the character of God. When you look, if there's any other time you look in the Old Testament to see, I quite don't understand that law. Why is that? Look how he was reflected in the life of Jesus, mm -hmm. how he blessed other people. Boom, it yes. makes a whole lot of difference. Yes. Yeah, exactly. the, the law, it comes to completion in Christ, but then also it's the idea that the law reveals our need of Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we yes. see the law, we realize how much we need a Savior because we fall so short of it. Oh, man. That's so, this is, uh, again, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is great because this is what happens. You're, you're so right. Because if the law, the law is like a, a tutor. Yes. Yeah. Like tutor, she showed you all the mistakes. Sorry, like you yeah. need to improve here. You need Absolutely. to Absolutely. And help me to understand it. And now I'm looking forward to taking the test. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. You're right? ready for Come on. Are you I ready want for that? A. <laughs> I want that A. And, and I'm going to have it yeah. by faith, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so look at this progression. We see how the covenant faith and love it evolves into this law mm -hmm. that, that leads to law. And in law, we see God, God's character. And mm -hmm. then from that, we see it, it leads us to Jesus Christ yes. ultimately. Yes, yes. And ultimately. Then, ultimately, yeah, Powerful. exactly. Then it leads us to Jesus Christ. But then if we make one more step, faith comes back mm. into place. Yeah. So mm. it's from faith covenant to, uh, to what? Remember, you remember what we were talking about? To law. To law, exactly. <laughs> then from law to what? Jesus. Jesus. To Jesus Christ. And then back to, to faith. faith. Back to faith. Yeah. Back to faith. It's almost like a sandwich, right? Yes. Yeah, they put all, the whole thing, all the layers together, right? Faith mm -hmm. in the beginning, faith from the top, and, and the special part of it is Jesus. Mm. Yes. And, it, and giving its flavor. It. Can, can you give me any example from Jesus' life as well as from like from the Bible, whatever, whatever, whatever you would like to give uh, about how faith uh, played an important role in the covenant relationship, Jesus healings, etc. What faith? What is faith, and why is it so important for God and for Jesus Christ? Um, I just came into my mind the centurion's faith. Hmm. You know, this man he was not even a Jew; he was a Roman. There, he, he was a soldier. There were one hundred guys under him. He said, "Lord." Um, my, my, my servant is sick and said, okay, I'm going to your house. And no, I'm not worthy of this. Mm. I'm a man of authority. What was the, Jesus' reaction at the time? <laughs> Remember? He was amazed at this. Mm. Yes, so, yeah. He said, I, I've not seen so great faith. In yes. the entire Israel. Yeah. You know, and in all of Israel. Yeah, so mm. he says, no, what? Don't it, worry. You're, you're so many it, children of your faith. Any other examples of faith? Oh, man, your faith has made you whole. Many mm -hmm. times in instances where mm -hmm. people are sick. And, and I mean, even in Hebrews 11, verse 6, it says, Without faith, it is impossible oh, to please Him. Mm. Wow, for he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who so diligently can we please yeah. God by, uh, by uh, obeying the law, etc., all of no. those things? Can we earn our way to heaven by obeying the Ten Commandments and maybe other 613? Not no. by just no. obeying. We're saved by our faith. Yes. We're saved by faith. Yes. But the, what, what does it result in? Oh, but Jesus said in John 14, 15, if you love me, you'll you keep, keep my commandments. My commandments. And I, I don't think it's just if you love me, keep my commandments. I think what he's really saying is if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Yes. It'll if just you happen. love your wife, you're going to love her. But this right? is exactly what it also says because it says, yeah, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's natural. It, it is yeah. not like, yeah. It's just natural. It just mm -hmm. happens. Okay, let's, let's move uh, forward just for a few more seconds. And then, I, like, what is our takeaway lesson from today? We need to <laughs> get to that point. Uh, what, does it, uh, what does it mean to have uh, the law in the heart? Mm. Mm. Because what, I, uh, one of my favorite texts is in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. And mm. let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. And I would like us to finish there as well. Uh, so Jeremiah 31, 31, what does it say in your Bible, uh, Tyler? It says, Behold. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Mm. 
And verse, uh, sorry, 32 and 33, I guess. It says, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says mm -hmm. the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will promise, put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be mm -hmm. my people. This is so, uh, because, uh, and when, then let's go for one more second to Matthew chapter 5, and this mm -hmm. is where, like, Matthew chapter 5. And uh, Matthew chapter 5, we read, uh, Matthew chapter 5, 6 and 7, is the, uh, it's called the Mount, uh, sorry, the, uh, the Mount of Blessings, yeah, the mm. Sermon on the Mount. Mm. The Sermon on the Mount. Do you, does it ring a bell? There is another, uh, like, what, what, yeah. what with? Mount Sinai. Mount, Mount Sinai. Sinai. Definitely. Mm. The, ma the ma Sermon on the Mount, yes. given by Jesus. And there is another sermon. On the Mount. Um. On the Mount. <laughs> wow. Sermon by God on the Mount yes. of Sinai, and Sermon on the Mount of, uh, yeah, here by Jesus. And look what, how incredible that is. Hmm. He says in verse 21, let's read just one verse, uh, verse 21. Can somebody read verse 21? You have, you have heard that it was, what it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of judgment. And verse 22. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of oh, judgment. Oh, wow. And mm -hmm. well, let's read verse 27, in ver verse 28. Yeah, Daniela. You heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery mm. with her in his heart. Wow. Look what Jesus, what Jesus brings it all back to. Mm. The law. The law and the law in the, the heart. heart. The heart. Wow. Yes. You have heard that it was said, but now I tell you, even if you think about it, mm. he's, mm. he's bringing us back to the heart. Mm. Wow. Because this is what New Covenant is about. And you know, when I, when I look at the Ten Commandments, when mm -hmm. I think about them, I don't necessarily see Ten Commands. I see Ten Promises. Excellent. Mm. If you meet me, if you fall in love with me, you will not kill. Yes. You will not steal. You'll no longer commit adultery. And you'll be falling in love with me. That's right. Mm. Over Praise and God. over again. Thank you. I was really blessed today. Thank yes. you very much, Daniel. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Diego. Thank, Thank you very you much too. for joining us as well. If you would like to contact us, please visit our website at www.sabbathschool.org. Remember, the goal of Bible study is information and especially transformation. It's for the head and also for the heart. For Sabbath School U, I'm Oleg Kostyuk. <laughs>